Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about this really exciting planet that was discovered back in 2015 that also seems to be the only planet that we know of that lost its original atmosphere and now has acquired its second atmosphere. And this planet known as Gliese 1132b is actually one of two objects in this particular star system, both being extremely interesting. But let's actually talk a little bit more about this because it's a pretty exciting discovery. So first of all, this planet, as I mentioned, was discovered around six years ago. And even back then, the scientists became really excited because of the location of the planet and also because of the star and the distance to the star. This is about 40 light years away from us, so it's close enough for us to actually be able to study its atmosphere and a lot of other features. Also, the way that this planet moves and crosses the star while producing the shadow allows us to produce very detailed observations of what's inside the planet's atmosphere. When the planet was discovered, the scientists were convinced we're going to be able to see the atmosphere to know exactly what the atmosphere is made out of and even be able to tell the color of the night sky or even be able to tell the color of sunsets on this particular planet. Mostly because compared to our own solar system, this is actually a red dwarf star, so it's about one-fifth of the size of the sun. And on top of this, the planet itself is much closer to the star as well. A single orbit here only takes about 1.6 days. So in some sense, this is a typical red dwarf system, but it's just perfectly located for us to study the atmosphere and to really learn a lot about this planet. But by looking at this planet and of course by looking at the star for a long time and also by doing a lot of other analysis, the scientists now estimate that the original atmosphere of this planet was most likely essentially hydrogen, kind of similar to what we have in planets like Saturn and Jupiter, which of course means that the original GJ1132b was probably a mini Neptune. Or in other words, it wasn't actually a terrestrial planet like you see right here, but it was probably more of a some sort of a gas giant-like planet, although not really a gas giant, a mini Neptune. But with time, because of the proximity to the star, all of this heat started to evaporate the atmosphere, and all of the atmosphere was initially lost. Now, this is a concept we refer to as a Ktonian planet, a planet that evaporated and only a crust and the terrestrial core was left behind. This is actually something that the scientists believed for a pretty long time. All of the observations suggested that, but some of the recent observations by looking at this location again started to discover certain other elements present in the atmosphere of the planet, specifically things like methane and hydrogen cyanide, along with some parts of molecular hydrogen as well. And what this detection suggested is the fact that the planet must have created a second atmosphere after the first one was destroyed. Moreover, it seems to be able to recreate this atmosphere as more and more of it is lost. So some of this hydrogen that's still present there is still being lost to the rest of the star system. But the majority of new molecules formed that produce the atmosphere seem to be coming from within the planet itself, most likely either as a result of massive volcanism on the planet or more likely through various seeping cracks around the planet where the gas just kind of leaks out through these various cracks formed on the planet, probably because of all of the tidal stress that the planet experiences as it orbits the star. With all of this hydrogen cyanide and methane very likely forming as a result of various gases mixing within the mantle of the planet, with hydrogen cyanide, for example, containing nitrogen, which is a very common gas present on planets like Earth and Mars, and both methane and hydrogen cyanide also containing hydrogen that was present on the planet initially. And though this planet is still pretty close to the star and is still experiencing the same amount of radiation and is thus losing some atmosphere even now, it probably reached some sort of a balance by now where the amount of hydrogen lost to the star system is sort of replenished through the emissions of all of this gas coming from within the planet itself. But the surprising calculations from the study also suggest that the atmospheric pressure here is extremely similar to the pressure of Earth. Basically, the amount of gas here is roughly around one atmospheric pressure, which means that it's kind of similar to Earth in some sense. So these calculations actually suggest that the atmospheric pressure here is roughly around one atmosphere. But unlike Earth though, the gases here are very different. As a matter of fact, here is the illustration produced by one of the artists. It's probably more a Venus-like world. The atmosphere is very hazy. It's also obviously somewhat toxic. 
and to some extent somewhat resembles early Earth more so than really anything else we have in the solar system today. Earth back in the days also was a hydrogen dominated planet with a lot of methane, carbon monoxide and a lot of other components present in the atmosphere making it somewhat toxic as well. But eventually with time Earth transformed into something a little bit more beautiful and turned into a water world as I've discussed in one of the previous videos somewhere right there. So anyway, back to the planet. Also unlike Earth, this object is probably extremely hot at least on the side of the planet that's facing the star. This planet is tidally locked, like a lot of other planets orbiting red dwarfs. But the question here is of course what happens in the twilight area, specifically area right here between the dark and the bright side of the planet, or what actually happens on the dark side of this planet. This is actually something that a lot of scientists would now love to know. And remember, because of the dark side here, the temperatures are going to be more bearable. Also, we have this very thick atmosphere with certain compounds that can technically be used by bacteria. Now, I was actually wondering what sort of temperatures could be produced on this planet, especially on the dark side, so I tried to create the simulation of this planet using Universe Sandbox. And more specifically, I really wanted to look at this temperature distribution graph that usually shows you what a typical tidally locked planet would have on its surface. So all of this red stuff here, that's super, super hot. This is like hundreds of degrees Kelvin, basically even hotter than Venus. And pretty much everything along the equator, assuming that the planet spins in the same direction as planet Earth, is still pretty hot, just over 200 degrees Celsius. But on the polar side, especially in certain locations, the temperature actually becomes somewhat bearable. As a matter of fact, right here, that's the average temperature of planet Earth. So the way that things are looking right now, what we have here is a really, really exciting planet. Even though it's tidally locked, that could actually provide it with certain locations on the surface, depending, of course, on how the atmosphere is distributed across the planet, which would allow it to have temperatures somewhat similar to planet Earth, but with those locations most likely being in complete darkness. So hypothetically, if there is any bacterial life here, it would most likely have to use some other power source to survive, very likely chemical source. But let's not go into this whole alien life discussion yet because we don't really know what's happening on this planet. What we do know, however, is that this planet most likely undergoes a lot of tidal stress and a lot of tidal heating, which is a process that usually happens to certain moons or even certain planets when a more massive object starts to kind of stretch them apart. A very good example here would be the moon known as Io orbiting Jupiter, which is sort of being pulled at by Jupiter, but also by its partners Europa, Ganymede and Callisto. And because of this, the moon gets stretched into an egg and then returns back into a spherical shape. In contrast, our own moon is always an egg. Because of this, Io is the most volcanically active object in the solar system, and all of the stuff from inside Io comes out and creates a lot of different atmospheric effects and also interacts with Jupiter as well. So something similar very likely happens around this planet as well. And the reason for this is that it has a partner that orbits not so far away from this particular planet, the object known as GG132c, and possibly even another partner even farther away. At the same time, a lot of these tidal effects are increased dramatically because of the orbit of the planet. The planet orbits with a slight eccentricity. And because of this, this planet very likely has extremely thin crust. So thin as a matter of fact that it probably has no hills, no mountains, basically extremely flat terrain. And all of this of course suggests that this is an extremely volcanically active planet. Or at least on one side, we don't really know what happens on the other side. For all we know, one of the sites here is extremely active and very, very hot. So sort of like this illustration I showed you previously, but the other side, the one always facing the darkness, has a somewhat more comfortable climate. That's of course not something we can improve or show just yet, but it's something we can technically simulate using some of the computer simulations we have today, like the NASA's Rocky 3D. I'm sure someone will come up with a study in some near future. Either way though, so far this is one of the most exciting discoveries of exoplanets out there and definitely a pretty cool planet simply because of the fact that it has very similar atmospheric pressure to Earth and the other object in the solar system known as Titan. So now that means that we have three objects with pressures where technically you can kind of stand and not get crushed by anything or lose consciousness because there's not enough pressure. Although on this particular planet, standing here without some sort of a gas mask, the hydrogen cyanide is probably going to get you pretty quick. 
Oh, and the other exciting fact that I forgot to mention is that the planet is also relatively similar age to planet Earth, about 4.5 billion years old. So, very exciting discovery, very exciting star system. And for all we know, we might also find something super exciting around its partner, which is actually also a potentially rocky world, slightly larger than planet Earth. And also slightly cooler in temperature as well, because its orbit is around 8 days around the star. And in this particular simulation, this is what it sort of looks like. It actually resembles Earth to a very eerie extent. But anyway, once we learn more about the star system or about this particular planet, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, consider supporting this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt, or maybe joining the channel memberships, all of which help me quite a lot. Either way, thank you for watching, come back tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye.